Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into the Homestead's YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to speak specifically about mulberries. This is a red fruit producing mulberry tree and it is the Illinois ever bearing variety. So I'm, I've cut down the um, nutritional fact content of the videos. I felt like it was taking up too much time and uh, I just decided from this point going forward, I would only speak directly about the uh, really high content and, and really beneficial aspects of the mulberries. So in one cup or 140 grams or 60 calories, that's 0% of your fat, cholesterol and sodium levels for your daily recommended intake. So uh, healthy on that front for sure. They are 80, comprised of 88% water. In a cup, you're gonna get 85% of your daily recommended intake of vitamin C, 14% of iron, two grams of protein uh, so these berries are unusually high in protein and iron content for fruit and there's also good amounts of potassium vitamin e and vitamin k i also want to mention that there's five powerful antioxidants that fight against chronic conditions such as heart heart disease diabetes cancer and there's one specific in there that i did extra research on rutin which is found uh, in a larger quantity in these berries and that might do most of the fighting for you and, and might be the most beneficial. So this native variety of red mulberry uh, grows well in zones 5A to 9B. Uh, right now they're doing some testing in zone 4 but I don't know if I'd really hold my breath on that one. We're in 5B, so this is a good fit for our property. And you can just see this is a uh, three-year-old tree, and it's doing pretty well. Uh, maybe not as well as I'd like it to. Um, I'm going to trim off some of these bottom branches later, but uh, once this thing gets a little bigger and a little stronger, we'll worry about how it looks. And uh, the bottom here, you can see, is starting to thicken up nicely. Uh, that's definitely, I don't know, about an inch and a half to two inches in diameter. So, yeah, they're, they're native to the Carolinian zone in Ontario, which is southwest of Toronto to Sarnia, uh, along the shores of Lake Erie, the rivers and shores of Lake Erie, and along the slopes of the Niagara Escarpment. In the US, they're found as far north as Vermont and New York. They'll go all the way down into Florida, west to Texas, north and basically a straight line to South Dakota and into Minnesota. South of the Great Lakes, they're found in the southern half of Michigan, and they've also been found to have naturalized in regions in California and also in British Columbia. So some specific things about this plant that make it attractive to us. It's a self-pollinating plant. Uh, to, there's nothing wrong with having a couple, but basically you're not going to need to have more than one to produce fruit. They are going to, it's a deciduous tree that can live in some instances up to 125 years. So I'm hopeful that this tree will outlast me. It's pretty contradictory. There's a lot of sites that spoke about the height of this tree. So I gave this tree lots of space. Um, some sites will say it will only grow about 20 feet. Right now it's probably around the seven to seven and a half foot mark. And other sites will say it will get up to 50 feet. And then there's a bunch of different resources that say this variety is going to settle in somewhere at 35 feet. It can have a spread of 30 to 35 feet. So you're going to want to plant them at least 20 feet apart. And in some instances, the canopy will be touching. It's a rapidly growing tree and its roots can grow up to 100 feet. So you're not going to want to plant this near your driveway or near sidewalks or things like that because it's going to upset your uh, your existing infrastructure on your property you can cause some damage. But um, when this thing is really in production, uh, full production, you're, you can expect 15 to 25 pounds of berries and it's going to start to produce two to three years after you've planted it. Uh, it's pretty neat. Basically, let's see if I can find some here. There you go. So they are pretty much everywhere. Um, you can see all of the little berries there. There's a ton forming on here and uh, I expect to get a few handfuls this year for the kids and, and uh, myself. So more into to the planting recommendations. 
It prefers the pH of 5.5, slightly acidic, to 6.5, which is neutral. The soil being loamy, so what you'd expect around lakes and rivers, clay, silt, and sand. But it needs to be well drained. Um, it does have some resistance to drought and also deer and even a little bit of salt resistance. It doesn't have a lot of pests. I have found a few of the gypsy moth larvae on here this year, but they really haven't done a lot of damage. And um, Japanese beetles seem to, to do some real damage to these guys every year, so I'm gonna handpick those off as I always do. Um, but the, it should be known that the fruit are enjoyed by many different species, birds, foxes, possums, raccoons, squirrels, and it's a really good distractor species. So I'm just gonna pan over here quickly. On the other side of the creek, I have four cherries there. I don't know if you can see them well, but they get robbed pretty brutally by robins especially, and this is gonna be a great distractor species once it's up and into full production. So a couple more years, I expect this thing to be quite large and really starting to produce. Some sun requirements, it's gonna want full sun, uh, six plus hours a day to partial shade, two to six hours of direct sunlight. You plant it in the spring or the fall, I always prefer to plant in the spring. Some of the drawbacks, which I don't really touch on in most species, is that um, when this thing is producing heavily and you have birds and different animals eating from it, you can expect to have some, some purple stains around your property. So if you hang your clothes out to dry like we do in the warmer months, uh, maybe a bird's going to sit on your clothesline and, and uh, stain some of your clothing. Um, your decks, if they're not really well protected and um, poly, if they're, if they're wood and they're not stained well and they don't have protection on them, you can wind up with some stains on there, which I don't really think is a big deal. Uh, they can be a little bit messy, so that's part of the mess. Uh, they do drop a lot of branches and stuff, and um, they like to spread. So they can spread through the berries themselves, through the bird waste or the animal waste, and also they can pop up from the root system uh, layering. And I mean, that's that's to me, it's not really a big deal. If I see any suckers and they're really in a spot I don't want them, then I'll pull them. But I'm okay with this thing spreading out a little bit here in uh, what we're trying to renaturalize this zone a little bit and and it can have some space here along the side of the creek i always leave eight to ten feet around the creek for native growth and and uh, just for you know life to kind of flourish on our property um, you can expect one to three inch berries uh, average being one and a half inches so two and a half centimeters to seven seven and a half centimeters is going to be your average size berry they taste like a cross between blueberry and raspberry, really delicious. And this tree is also bird, dog, cat, butterfly, and horse friendly. So you're really not gonna have to worry about anything that you have living on your property alongside you. You really shouldn't have to worry if your dogs eat them or your cats get at them or even your horses strip a few leaves, it's not going to kill them. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna mention when it comes to planting recommendations, with most plants it's it's along the same lines down here i mulch a little bit and um this is just grass from the back portion there's a lot of clover back here and um in the clover there's a lot of nitrogen so i just keep the weeds back and uh, give this thing a chance you don't have to fertilize it with a hundred foot root span you definitely don't have to fertilize this thing it's going to get everything it needs but i just like to give it a chance when it starts growing this is its third year and uh, I like to keep stuff back as much as I can without overworking. But uh, you're going to want to dig down twice as deep as the root ball and twice as wide and have some loose soil. Um, one thing I've discovered and kind of toyed with this year, which this plant wasn't planted that way, but instead of round holes to plant in, I've been reading a lot of interesting facts about people planting in square holes and the fact that by planting in square holes, the roots just don't go in a circular motion if they come into compacted soil they'll actually work themselves into a corner and maybe push through so that might be something beneficial to try out next year but anyways i think that's it for today uh, this is a great tree a beautiful deciduous tree the berries are so good and super healthy for you and uh, it's rapid growing you know so give it a shot if you're interested anyways that's it for today folks thanks a lot for tuning in as always and if you want to give me a like and uh, share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Take care.